capsule needles so you can preserve and inject poisons or potions into your targets. And Dragon's Breath sprays of flaming oil, acid, and even holy water to turn your weak and boring 5e blowgun into a functional and fun weapon. Because in case you forgot, I already made a video about how nearly 10,000 D&D lovers determined the blowgun to be the worst weapon in 5e, where I broke down each one of the blowguns objectively pretty bad properties, and I shared two new homebrew weapon properties that started to help make the blowgun cool. Stealthy. This quiet, ranged weapon requires little movement when making an attack. When you make an attack with this weapon while hidden, the target may notice your attack, but the target does not automatically know your location, whether the attack hits or misses. And concealable. This small or unassuming weapon can be easily hidden or disguised. You have advantage on dexterity, stealth, or sleight of hand checks to hide this weapon on your person or elsewhere, or to disguise it as another object. But most importantly, I asked you for more ideas to help the blowgun become a decent weapon, and boy did you deliver. I think my favorite ideas were the pan flute style multi-barrel blowgun and the special needles to allow you to shoot your allies with potions of healing. Then, with the help of a couple collaborators, I turned those ideas and a few more fun ones into what finally feels like a blowgun with awesome properties and ammunition that I'm going to share with you. Because I'm Bob, this is where we learn how to have more fun playing D&D together, and of course, you're going to need an equally awesome blowgun description. At first glance, just a well-crafted wooden flute, this cleverly constructed blowgun is the ultimate assassin's tool. To preserve the illusion of a more simple instrument, it requires a practice eye to see that the flute's finger holes are not truly bored all the way through the wood. Instead of engravings upon its surface, sigils have been cleverly painted along the inside of the blowgun's tube in indelible gold and silver inks designed to enhance accuracy and force. That's just one of over 8,000 professionally written evocative fantasy descriptions from Describe that you can easily search and use in your game. Check out Describe for free through the link below or sign up with code BOB to save 10%. Now look at this blowgun. Ranged, of course. Simple, not martial, so more than four classes can actually use it. And still only one piercing damage because trust me, it's getting plenty of other cool stuff. That's what this whole video is about. Ammunition, 3120, because being the only weapon with 25100 was just mean, and still loading, which we'll talk about in a minute. But as recommended new properties, we have stealthy and concealable which I just shared a minute ago. Snorkeling, which is really just a utility feature I described in the previous video about blowguns. And our first new one for this video, Finesse Con. This property is a slightly new take on the finesse rule you already know and love. Basically, many folks agree that you should technically be able to rely on constitution, the ability score for holding your breath when using this breath-based weapon. So I wrote this, Finesse. When making an attack with a finesse weapon, you choose the ability modifier between the standard option, strength for melee attacks, dexterity for ranged attacks, and the alternative option listed in parentheses alongside this property. You must use the same modifier for the attack and damage roll. It uses the exact same principle as regular finesse, being able to choose between two ability scores for your attack and damage roll, but it expands it to work with the weapon's main ability or whatever other ability is listed in parentheses next to the property also making its meaning a little more clear. And this option for constitution is already making the blowgun feel like a hilarious, but somehow also perfectly thematic weapon for your big bad barbarian characters. <laughs> okay, one new optional property of the blowgun is dual shot. This ranged weapon is designed to fire two projectiles in rapid succession. If you can make two or more attacks on your turn, you can use two of your attacks to fire both projectiles on your turn before loading the weapon. Loading this weapon requires a bonus action and provokes opportunity attacks from enemy creatures within melee range. The idea here is to get around the loading property, but just a little bit. Because under normal circumstances, even if you had an extra attack or some other feature allowing you to make an extra attack on your turn, the blowgun's loading property always restricted you to only one attack per turn, which was really bad with only that one point of damage. Remember, the crossbow has that crossbow expert feat to get around this, but the blowgun doesn't have anything like that until now. With a dual shot, aka double barrel blowgun, you can load both barrels at once, so you can make two attacks before you reload, and even on the same turn, as long as you can normally make two attacks per turn. But you gotta let me know in the comments, are two barrels enough? 
Should a character really be able to get that pan flute style quadruple barrel blowgun? Regardless, I designated this as an optional property rather than recommended because I don't recommend that every blowgun in your setting should be designed with two or more barrels. This extra barrel is more likely something that your character should have to craft or commission or just purchase probably for a similar cost to the blowgun itself since it's sort of like duct taping two blowguns together. Now before we get to my favorite part, all the new blowgun ammunition like capsule needles and sprays, I give you the battle blowgun. Ranged, martial, 1d4 piercing for a little damage boost, ammunition 3120 because going any higher range felt unrealistic, loading and two-handed because it's just big. This martial blowgun also has all the same recommended properties, except concealable has been made optional for this one, because you'd have to get like a special battle blowgun specifically designed to be disguised as a staff or something else in order to hide it in plain sight. But here we go. Capsule needles. You can use this hypodermic ammunition to deliver a dose of poison, a potion, or another liquid with a weapon in the blowgun category. One dose of poison, one potion, or one vial of another liquid can be used to fill three capsule needles, taking 10 minutes to transfer the contents. On a hit, a poison capsule needle subjects the target to the full effects of the dose of poison, then loses its potency. Okay, there's more, but let's unpack that poison part first. You take 10 minutes during a rest or some other downtime to split one dose of poison into three needles. And I decided that each of the three needles should deliver the full effect of the dose, because one, that's already how the official rules work for basic poison, and two, this guarantees you more bang for your buck with all the cool poisons, which are well known to be way too freaking expensive in D&D 5e. Like, it makes sense for these illegal and dangerous substances to be expensive, but the ultra high cost of these cool poisons makes them flat out unavailable to low level characters and still cost prohibitive to high level characters, not to mention the official rules say poison takes an action to apply to weapons and ammo and then only remains potent for like one minute. So you don't want to do it during combat because it takes your whole action to do so, but you can't really use it before combat because it only works for one minute. Therefore, I designed the capsule needle to give you more uses of the awesome but pricey poisons, and the 10 minutes of preparation makes it a more obvious rest activity, but the contents are also preserved in the needle, so you don't need to worry about your poison losing potency before you get to use it. And I made up my own fun poisons that will go into the final draft of this thing, so you won't have to refer to a different source book. Common poison for a little extra damage and the chance to cause the poison condition. Cockatrice venom, giant spider venom, and a sleep poison because everybody wants to use those kinds of things. And a truth poison because if your players are like mine, they'll have a lot of fun with this one. <laughs> Alright, next, when a potion capsule needle hits a target, it delivers the potion's full effect. Then all three potion capsule needles in its set lose their potency. In other words, your one potion of healing goes into three needles, similar to that dose of poison, but once you hit a creature with one of those healing needles, that target creature gets the full effect of the potion, then all three needles magically lose their potency, unlike the poison which can be used three times. That might seem weird, but there are a few great reasons for handling it this way. One, unlike with doses of poison, I do not think PCs should get three potions for the price of one because potions are already more fairly priced and generally attainable than poisons are. Two. While it might have been easy to say that one potion of healing needle can have a reduced effect, healing just 1d4 hit points, it would be way too complicated to try to design reduced effects for every single potion, but it was simple to say that the full effect just works once. And three, rather than just getting one functional needle, I like the idea of three potentially functional needles because it means you can miss once or twice without wasting the whole potion, plus potions are magical, so we just get to be a little more flexible with how they work in game. But let me know in the comments, should your blowgunner PC only get that one functional potion needle to make it more of a risk for trying to deliver this potion in a weird way? Or should they get three potions for the price of one, just like those doses of poison? Anyway, D&D 5e has some other liquids that are not super expensive like poisons, but also not magical like potions, so this is where I created some simple reduced effects. Vials of acid, holy water, and other liquids at the GM's discretion can also be divided into three capsule needles with reduced effects, and lose their potency on a hit. Acid. On a hit, the target takes an additional 1d6 acid damage. And holy water. 
On a hit against a fiend or undead creature, the target takes an additional 1d6 radiant damage. In the official rules, these vials of liquid deal 2d6 damage each, so cutting them right in half to 1d6 felt right, because there's less liquid in each needle, but it's also getting injected right into the target, and for acid and holy water, I did use their standard 2d6 damage for my favorite new addition to the blowgun, Dragon's Breath Sprays. Instead of using needles, you can use vials of spray ammunition called Dragon's Breath with a weapon in the blowgun category. When you make an attack with spray ammunition, each creature in a 15-foot line must make a dexterity saving throw where the DC is equal to 8 plus your con modifier plus your proficiency bonus. On a failure, the target suffers the effects of the type of Dragon's Breath spray used for the attack. Acid. This acidic mist deals 2d6 acid damage or half on a success. Holy Water. This divine essence deals 2d6 radiant damage against fiends and undead creatures or half damage on a success. Pepper. This noxious vapor deals 2d4 poison damage and the target is blinded until the start of their next turn. On a success, the target takes half damage and is not blinded. Flaming Oil. This incendiary gout of fire deals 3d4 fire damage and the target is burning. On a success, the target takes half damage and is not burning. So if you like the idea of turning your blowgun into a blowtorch, remember to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your game group, and maybe subscribe to stay up to date on my weapons project stuff. Then watch this video about the new burning condition, and consider joining my Patreon at the pillar tier to access my actual working manuscript of this whole 5e weapon project. Thanks for your support, and keep building.